My greetings to everyone. I am Professor Dr. Namita Rajput, Professor in Department of Commerce, Sri Aurobindo College, University of Delhi. We are on with the new series on finance for everyone, and today we have a topic on risk management standards and the frameworks. So we'll start with the ISO 31000, which is an international standard for the risk management. Call ISO 31000, which offers the concepts and recommendations for controlling the hazards in the organization. It is intended to be relevant to many different kind of organizations, including both the non-profit and the profit organizations, the public and private, and the big and small. So basically, the standard provides a framework for the risk management that include the following components. The first is establishing the context entails establishing the objectives, scope, and internal and external elements that it could influence the risk management process. The second is your risk identification. So this process involves identification possible risk such as the hazards, threats and opportunities that might have an influence on the organization's objectives. Next we have is the risk analysis and assessment which include determining the possibility and the possible consequences of the risk that have been discovered as well as the relevance of those risk to be the organization. The next we have is a risk treatment which entails creating and putting into practice the plans to control or lessen the risk that have been recognized such as avoiding shifting accepting or minimizing the risk. Next is your risk monitoring and review. So this entails a continuous evaluation of the efficiency of the risk management process including the detection of the fresh dangers or the modifications to the old ones. So the integration of the risk management into a company's overall management system and the decision making procedures is very crucial and according to ISO 31000 standard additionally it emphasizes the need to of a structured approach to the risk management as well as the participation and engagement of all the stakeholders the first is we have a coso erm framework which offers the instructions for creating and putting into effect the risk management plans that are in line with an organization's goals and risk tolerance the framework highlights the need of an organized and the methodical approach to the risk management and offers a number of elements and the concepts to help in creation of a successful risk management plans so the following are the few methods the business can employ to apply the coso erm framework The first is creating a culture of the risk management inside an organization. So the COSO ERM framework emphasizes the need of doing this. So this entails raising the employee knowledge of the risk and motivating the staff members to incorporate the risk management into everyday task at all levels. The next is your recognizing and evaluating the risk. The organizations may utilize the COSO ERM framework to recognize and evaluate the risk that have an a deep impact on their goals and to do this the risk assessment must be conducted the prospective risk and opportunities must be examined and the risk must have been prioritized based on the likelihood and the potential effect the next is your creating the risk response plans organizations may create the risk response strategies that are in line with their goals and the risk tolerance based on the findings of risk assessment for example danger could be avoided accepted diminished or shared the next is your putting controls in place organizations may put the control in place to assess manage risk and make sure that the risk response plans work and this might entail putting rules and the procedures into place creating monitoring and reporting systems and offering the personal training and instructions next we have as a risk management process monitoring and review the coso erm framework emphasizes the significance of monitoring and reviewing the risk management process to make sure it it continues to be efficient and in line with the organizational goals and to do this it is required to perform the routine evaluations of the risk assessment risk response plans and the controls and to make any necessary improvement 
By using the COSO ERM framework and creating a thorough efficient risk management program that is suited to their particular requirement and the goals, organizations may achieve their goals. Next we have is NIST Cyber Security Framework. The National Institute of Standard and Technology created the NIST Cyber Security Framework as a collection of the principles to aid organizations in managing and lowering the cyber security risk. The effective order 13636 which called for the creation of a voluntary framework to enhance the cyber security for the critical infrastructure in the United States. They prompted the establishment of this framework. The core implementation tiers the profiles and the three primary divisions of the NIST CSF. Organizations can utilize the cyber security action and results provided by the core to manage the cyber security risk and it is broken down into the following five categories. First is identify, second is protect, third is detect, the fourth is to respond and the last is to recover. The implementation of the tiers, they give organizations a mechanism to evaluate their cybersecurity risk management procedures and establish their level of framework, implementation, partial risk informed, then repeatable and adaptive, they are the four stages. Based on their unique business needs, the level of risk tolerance and the resource availability the profiles enable the organizations to develop a tailored path for adopting this framework. Because the NIST CSF is adaptable and versatile, the organizations of the various shapes and the sizes may utilize it to strengthen their cybersecurity posture. Now, additionally, it may be utilized in conjunction with the other cybersecurity standards and the guideline and incorporated into an organization's broader risk management. So, identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. Let us now do the best practices for a risk management. The first step is creating a risk aware culture. Effective risk management and cyber security depend on fostering the culture of risk awareness inside an organization. The following are some of the tips for developing a culture that is risk awareness. The first is start at the top. The organization leadership sets the tone. The top level executives must completely commit to fostering a culture of risk awareness and actively engage in communicating this commitment to the staff members. The second is to provide the instruction and training. The workers must be aware of the dangers connected to their work duties and how to reduce those risks. Employees who regularly get training and instruction on the cyber security best practices, they can better understand their responsibility for securing the company. Now encourage reporting. The workers must feel at ease in providing the information about accidents and the possible dangers. Establish a setting where the employees feel secure in reporting the issues and give them access to organized reporting channels. Encourage the collaborations. The interdepartmental cooperation can assist in identifying and reducing the risk. Encourage interdepartmental teams to collaborate on the risk identification and the management. Next is to acknowledge and reward the positive conduct. Compensate the staff members for sound risk management practices. So this might involve rewarding the staff members who report the problems or who take initiative to reduce the hazards. Next is that we have to integrate the risk management into the organization's culture. Include the risk management in the organization's vision and the purpose statements. This can assist, emphasize the value of risk management 
and foster a culture where it takes the precedence. Next is we have a constantly access and review. Regularly assess and review the success of a risk aware culture. So this might involve polling employees, keeping an eye on the incidence reports and going over the risk assessment. By putting these recommended practices into practice, organization may develop a culture of risk awareness that aids in risk identification and a risk mitigation and eventually enhancing their overall cyber security posture. Now coming on to the second part, establishing clear risk management roles and responsibility. Effective risk management and cyber security depend on the definition of defined roles and responsibilities. The following are some of the best practices for clearly defining the role and the duties in the risk management. The first is to assign a risk management team. Create a team in charge of locating, evaluating and reducing the risk. Representatives from the organization's IT legal compliance and the risk management departments should be on this team. The second is clearly identify the roles and the duties. Specify each team member's task and responsibilities. So this may involve deciding who is in charge of a particular risk management task, including risk assessment, incident handling and the risk reduction. Next is we have a make sure accountability is established. For the risk management, create a distinct line of responsibility and this may entail deciding who is in charge of making the risk management choices and who is in charge of making sure the risk management tasks are accomplished. The fourth point is explain the role and responsibilities. Explain to all staff members what each member of the risk management team is responsible for. So this can assist promoting a culture of risk awareness and ensure that everyone is aware of their part in the risk management. Next we have is provide education and training. To ensure that the risk management team has the information and abilities required to manage the risk by providing education and training to them. Training in Risk Assessment Methodology Incident Response Protocols and the Risk Reduction Tactics can all fall under this particular category. Regularly Assessing the Roles and the Responsibilities Assess the Risk Management Team Duties and Responsibilities often to make sure they remain pertinent and efficient. So this might involve evaluating the team's performance on a regular basis and pinpointing the areas that need improvement. Now establishing the defined roles and responsibility for the risk management via the application of these best practices which will help the organization's overall cybersecurity posture. The third is conducting the regular risk assessment. Effective risk management and cyber security depend on conducting regular risk assessments. Following are some of the top guidelines for performing the frequent risk assessment. Identify assets and the hazards. List all of the organization's assets that need to be protected along with the risk related to each item. So this may involve determining the weak points, dangers and the potential effects. Next we have is to establish the risk tolerance. Establishing the organization's degree of risk acceptance by determining the organization's risk tolerance. And this can aid in directing the process of risk assessment and ensuring that risks are prioritized according to their possible consequences. The third is select a risk assessment methodology. Pick an approach that is suitable for the organization's size and complexities. Methodologies like NIST, Cybersecurity Framework, ISO 27001 or FAIR can be used in this. 
Next is include the stakeholders. Include participants in the risk assessment process from all the areas of organization. So this can involve the cooperative executives and other important stakeholders as well as IT legal compliance and the risk management representatives. The next is to perform a comprehensive analysis. Perform a comprehensive study of the risk identified taking into account each risk likelihood and the potential consequences. So using this information, risk management choices may be prioritized and directed. Next is to create a risk assessment management strategy. Create a risk management strategy outlining the actions the organizations will take to reduce the identified risk. So this may entail putting controls in place, shifting the risk or accepting the risk. Next is regularly review and updates to make sure the risk assessment is up to date and pertinent, do it frequently. And this might involve doing the recurring assessments, keeping an eye out of for fresh vulnerabilities and the threats and changing the risk management strategies as required. So by putting these best practices into practice, Business may carrying out a routine risk assessment that help them discover and reduce the threats. So thereby strengthening their entire cyber security posture. Next we have is the fourth point that is integrating the risk management into the decision making process. Making the educated and successful judgments. It requires incorporating the risk assessment into the decision-making process. The process of risk assessment is identifying the possible hazards connected to a certain choice or a course of action, assessing the likelihood and potential consequences of those risks and then figuring out how to reduce or manage those risks. The following are some of the essential process for incorporating the risk assessment into the selection process. The first is decide what has to be decided. Start by stating the choice that must be taken into the simple terms. And this will guarantee that all the pertinent risks are taken into account and assist to concentrate the risk assessment process. The second is identify the potential risk. List any dangers that might result from your choices. So this might be grouped brainstorming, examining the prior experience or reading the related literature. The third is determine the probability and the possible effect. Evaluate each identified risk likelihood and the potential impact. Depending on the type of the hazards, this can be done by qualitative or quantitative assessment. Create the risk assessment strategies. After the hazards have been identified and assessed, create the plans to lessen them or controlling them. This might entail creating a backup plan, putting the risk management strategies into action or transferring the risk via insurance or another strategy. Then you need to monitor and review to make sure the risk assessment process is current and pertinent. Continuously examine how well the risk assessment management techniques are working. Organizations may raise the overall success rate, making more informed and effective decisions and lessen the possibility of unfavorable consequences by incorporating the risk management into the decision-making process. Now let me give you some examples of a successful risk management. There is a case study of the organizations that have effectively managed the risk. Sure, here are some of the examples of the business that have effectively controlled the risk. Few of them are Nestle, Ford, Amazon. So let me first give you an example of Nestle. 
when it was revealed that its infant formula was raising a newborn death rates in the underdeveloped nations in late 1970s nestle was exposed to a serious danger and in response the business created a thorough set of criteria for marketing distribution of their infant formula including educating the mothers and the medical professionals nestle was able to reduce the risk and reestablish its reputation as a consequence next is we are going to have about a bp when the deep water horizon oil rig exploded in the gulf of mexico in 2010 bp was exposed to a significant risk the business reacted by putting into action a thorough response plan that included controlling the leak cleaning up the damaged areas and paying people impacted by the accident and in order to avoid the repeating the same mistakes bp also significantly revised its safety and risk management procedures so next we are going to take up the most important example of ford when it was revealed that their well light explorer suv had a propensity to flip over in certain circumstances in 1990s ford faced a serious danger and in response the manufacturer altered the explorer design and enhanced its safety features including electronic stability control among them so ford was able to reduce the risk and preserve its position in the suv industry as a consequence next we have the example of amazon in 2013 when a technical issue led its website to go offline for many hours leading to lost sales and irritate the customers amazon was exposed to a huge amount of risk the corporations responded by putting into place a variety of steps such as the usage of numerous data centers and redundant systems the data centers and redundant systems to enhance the dependability and the resilience of its website amazon was able to reduce the risk as a consequence and keep its position as the top online retailer so these particular instances show how the business may successfully manage the risk by proactively identifying mitigating the possible hazards putting in place the efficient risk management techniques and regularly monitoring and assessing their risk managerial positions so what are the lessons learned from the successful risk management practices so we have done at least five examples of how beautifully they are able to overcome the risk by actually intelligently making a rational policies for risk mitigation and hence they were again the winners so there are some lessons learned from this successful risk management practices So here are some takeaways from the effective risk management strategies coupled with the illustrations from the significant case studies emphasizing a culture of risk awareness and accountability successful risk management strategies require an organization wide culture of risk awareness and accountability so this entails the encouraging a climate of open dialogue teamwork and continual development and making sure that every employee is aware of their duties in the risk management and in reaction to the the uh, tylenol crisis in 1982 for example johnson and johnson actly swiftly to recall their products and put in place the additional safety procedures the company robust safety and accountability culture was recognized for its swift response next is to proactively identifying and analyzing the risk effective risk management approach 
to locate and evaluating the possible hazards. So, this entails consulting with the stakeholders, performing in-depth risk analysis and periodically assessing the risk management plans to make sure that they are still applicable and efficient. And as a illustration, consider the World Health Organization reaction to 2014 Ebola outbreak. The WHO proactively detected and assessed the danger of the outbreak and created a thorough response plan to control and manage the disease spread. Strong communication and coordination amongst all the shareholders, including the workers, clients, suppliers and the regulators, are very essential for effective risk management. So, this makes it possible to guarantee that hazards are recognized and handled in a very prompt and efficient manner. So, as an illustration, consider how aviation uh, sector responded to 9-11 terrorist attack. The airline, airports and regulators all collaborated to create a new security regulations in order to meet the threat posed by the terrorism. An ongoing monitoring and assessment to make sure that the risk management methods are still effective and pertinent, successful risk management practices entail ongoing monitoring and evaluation of the risk management techniques. The regular risk assessment audits and review of the risk management policies and the process may be necessary for doing all this. And in reaction to a number of safety recalls in 2014, for instance, the General Motors performed a thorough evaluation of its safety practices and the culture, which resulted in appreciable advancement in its risk management procedures and effectively mitigating the risk. Thank you so much.